So this is my Nissan 240SX. Uh, it's a 91 uh, hatchback, um, KA24 dual overhead cam, um, limited slip diff, uh, automatic transmission, which is a big problem I have to address with this car. Right now, my three big things that need to be addressed are, all right, let me get four big things. Four big things that I would like to have done, right now it's January, I'd like to have them done by the beginning of summer so I can spend summer doing fun shit. But um, paint would be great. Uh, that's low priority because, you know, look how frosty the car is right now, you can't paint a car like that. So I might have to wait till it's warmer to do paint. Um, transmission swap because I don't want an automatic. Uh, I bought this because it was obscenely cheap for a 240 anyways. Um, any other car in this condition would probably go for about a hundred dollars but not a 240. Um, where was I? Paint, transmission, there's some rust. Not a lot of rust, but there's some rust. You know, just down here by the rear wheel well and a little bit on the rocker below the door. That's par for the course in Alberta. I mean, I'll fix that all day. Um, won't be the first time and it won't be the last time. And the last thing was, it runs a little rough. That's what I'm gonna be working on today. Let me see if my camera can even focus. So, I warmed it up a bit before I shot this video, but pretty much. Ignore that slapping sound, that's just an exhaust leak, but it's got a hesitation. Um, it, it's really down on power. It makes enough that I can pull it like up and down the driveway, but when you try to accelerate... Right now I'm thinking it's a fuel problem. Um, ideally it's a clogged filter. That would be amazing, because I can fix that for about 40 bucks in about five minutes. But I'm thinking with my luck it'll probably be something a little bit more involved. So I pulled out the... I came back here, I started diagnosing the bad running on the 240 here, and I pulled out the old fuel filter, and it is uh, definitely clogged. It's, uh, let's see here. So this is the old one, and I'm going to rely on sound for this, but when I try and blow through it, I, I can't even blow air through and this is the new one and it's just air blows through it just fine. I'm 100% sure that's not going to come across well in video. Um, <laughs> but you get the gist. This one I can't blow air through, the new one I can. Um, so if that doesn't, at the very least, I'm getting rid of a bad part. If it doesn't fix the running issue, well I at least still did fix something. So, uh, I did a fuel filter and um, also a, a timing job uh, for the ignition timing. And uh, yeah, I got the car running really good. Um, all in all, I spent 15 bucks. So, I'm glad that worked out. You can see here. Um, I mean, it sounds like a KA, that's for sure, but yeah, it doesn't bog anymore. Uh, I took it for a spin around the block. It didn't uh, didn't bog down under load either. It felt like it had decent power. Um, I honestly wouldn't be able to get an idea of what kind of power it's got until I could take it for a spin on a dry road because uh, everything's pretty snowy right now. Okay, right now, I'm just happy that I've got it running. Uh, yeah, and honestly, when I get the chance, I'll probably put my insurance on it and start dailying it. So, I've been dailying the 240 for about a week now. Uh, it's been doing pretty good. Um, put about 600 kilometers on it, no issues. Uh, I had a good week in terms of getting parts. Um, pops open, you can see I pulled the, uh white wheel out of the hard body 
but I also managed to pick up uh, drive shaft, clutch pedal, clutch master cylinder, and uh, just some other little things I needed. So that's a lot of the manual parts I needed that I have. And then I sold the hard body and used some of the money I got from the hard body to pick up, to order um, a clutch, flywheel, pressure plate, throw out bearing. So the parts I really need before I can swap this thing is I need a transmission, obviously. I need flywheel bolts. I need clutch hard lines. And uh, there's some other little things I need, but in terms of gathering parts, I've done really well because I'd, I'd like to, uh, the first warm weekend of the summer we get, I would like to get this swap going. But uh, as for what needs to be done right now, so I've been driving this car for a week, like I said, and earlier when I was running the car, you heard a slapping sound that I said was an exhaust leak. This is why, this is where that exhaust leak comes from. You can see right there, that is a... It was part of the emission system. I don't remember where this thing used to go, but this metal tube here comes right off the exhaust, and then this guy's solution for blocking it off was putting a piece of rubber hose on it, and then putting a bolt in the end of the rubber hose, and then hose clamping it together. And I'm it's killing me. Like... <laughs> I'm dying of carbon monoxide poisoning when I drive this car. So originally I thought I'd leave that till a nice warm day, but honestly if I keep driving like this I'm gonna die. Cause it's winter, it's minus 19 today. So I have to have the heat on and I can't open the windows. Well I could, but I don't want to. So it's like driving around in a gas chamber. It's fucking awful. So yeah, today I'm gonna crimp that and weld it shut. So, in the most uh, 240 series of events that's ever happened, I uh, lifted the car up to fix my exhaust leak and realized that my water pump is weeping, um, which is a huge pain in the ass, but I got the exhaust fixed. I'm not going to zoom in on it because it's some pretty haggard craftsmanship. Um, I realized that I couldn't... Uh, couldn't crimp it because it's made of fucking vibranium or some Captain America shit. Um, so I just welded it shut. I just filled the entire thing in with weld and now it doesn't leak anymore. Yeah, luckily parts store had a 240 water pump in stock. So I'm just heading over there right now. I should just start buying new water pumps on the way home from buying cars because every vehicle I buy... I gotta do the water pump in, in like, a week of buying it. Like, on one hand, this heat dish is doing absolutely nothing. But on the other hand, I would kill you if you tried to take it away from me. So I got the new water pump in. Uh, the old water pump, I did notice, uh, did have a bit of play in it, but... I don't know, overall it didn't seem that bad. I wish it had not chosen today to shit out on me. Um, but I mean, honestly, a KA, as far as water pump jobs go, a KA with an emissions delete is about as easy as it gets. I just pulled off the fan, pulled off the belt, and I'm good. Uh, so now I have to put the fan back, or put the belt back on, put the fan back on. Um, then it should be, then I gotta refill it with coolant, then it should be good to go. Um, I'd say I got maybe 60% of the coolant in the bucket, which is about as good as you can hope for when all you've got is a tiny Home Depot bucket. So if you ever have a jug of antifreeze and you're not sure if it's still good, uh, here's a quick tip. If it does this, it's not good anymore. So that's the water pump job done. Uh, between that and fixing the exhaust leak, I actually did have a pretty productive day, uh, even though that's not how I wanted my day to go at all. Uh, so yeah, I um, think this video is going to be pretty long already, so I think that'll probably be the end of part one. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned. Um, hopefully I'll start getting some 
more manual parts in here because like I said first warm weekend of the season I'd like to get that done because this automatic transmission is cramping my style you gotta pretty much get it get a permission slip signed to put your foot down it it does not want to let you go fast um, I mean it's a stock K it's not like it's going fast anyways but it doesn't want to let you have any fun uh, so yeah stay tuned for uh, part two and uh, until then, let me know what you think of these wheels. Uh, should I keep them or should I get rid of them? Because they're knockoffs, but I don't know if they're passable knockoffs. And I think with the right tire setup, and if I get rid of the monster truck ride height, they could look alright. But uh, let me know what you think.